Um, yeah, so thank you for the introduction. I'm really happy to be here with you today. So yeah, what I'm going to talk about today is the usage of natural language processing in modern enterprises on the example of our solutions built from, for customer service office for the, processing, uh, for the processing and automating the process of answering the emails. But first, a few words about us, about the Blue AI. So we are the startup uh, concentrating on building artificial intelligence solutions and connected with that big data environment. We have our locations in Hamburg, in Germany, and in Poznan, in Poland. And we cooperate with our partners specialized in enterprise software solutions and mixed reality. So we actually are building also complex solutions based on the SAP data working with our first partner and also mixed reality applications with the second one. Uh, yes, as was said, we concentrate on natural language processing with the projects like uh, Mailbot, that's the subject of today's presentation, and also Twitterbot that you can see today in our stand. Uh, secondly, machine learning, based mostly on a sensor data with the projects like predictive maintenance and image processing with holographic AI, so that's uh, pretty interesting projects where we cooperate with our mixed reality partner and we build solutions for the healthcare sector. So using the Microsoft HoloLens glasses that it's actually being applied last week also in the hospital uh, in Hamburg uh, for its application for surgeons. Uh, yeah, so why is natural language processing so important in modern enterprises? So according to the Gartner Institute, around 80% of data is nowadays being unstructured, with the biggest part of it being textual data. So like web pages, legal documents, uh, emails, social media, and many more. Adding to that, that the data is being expected to grow exponentially in the next years. Uh, it's actually being impossible, or depending from the use case, highly time consuming for a human to get any valuable information out of that. Uh, so that's actually the time where natural language processing comes into play and helps us to also make the process of, for example, answering the questions of the customers or, for example, finding needed information in many different uh, kinds of data. Uh, secondly, getting new business insights is above all with the sentiment analysis and also connecting with, with uh, also meeting the process of searching for the information. You can think here about the example of for example, looking for the drawbacks or negative of side effects of your products in the internet because not every customer is writing directly to the producer, but sometimes in the first line writing it on the internet that he's not happy with the product. And yeah, connected with that cost reductions too. Uh, so going to our case, uh, as I said, we are working uh, with our client who has a customer service office. So, the problem here is that they have to deal every day with hundreds or thousands of emails. And most of them are being their highly repetitive cases, allowing us actually to use the artificial intelligence to um, really automate the process here. And as many companies having this kind of customer service offices are really international, uh, work on international markets, they have to mostly deal with multitude of languages. Uh, so our solutions to this problem is the mailbot, so a solution allowing us to automate the process of answering the emails. So as you can see here on the exemplary um, emails, the customers have problems like they bought a product, but they, have, they still wait to del for the delivery and they want to know when does it come. Or they ask when, if, if a product is available in some of your locations or they are not happy with the product and are just asking if they can return it or not. Um, so in our process, is um, the consultant gets the email and also the suggested answer by the, by the mail bot, uh, enhanced also about the information from the external system, like in our case, it was this SAP CRM system, like checking the status of the order and so on. And how does it work briefly? So we train our model on a a uh, training set that we got from our customer, allowing us to analyze and, and let's say, understand the message. Uh, that was uh, allowing us to nextly classify it. So it was based on the predefined amount and cases of the customer. So in our case, it was seven categories that we were using. 
and nextly extracting the information. So, uh, like for example, the name of the customer, the location, but also more user-specific ones like the order number or the product ID. Uh, based on that, we built the queries to external systems. So, as I said, to so SAP CRM systems. And then it allowed us to build and suggest the answer to the consultant. And now the consultant got the, on the front end, um, UI the suggestions and has the choice. Is it the correct answer? Or do I want to send it to the customer? Or do I need to feed there something? And nevertheless, every of such decisions going back to the model, so it's working iteratively, allowing us to make it better with every iteration. So when it comes to natural language processing, there are actually two main points that are interesting here. So first of all is the classification. And it's really dependent from the use case. It depends what data are you dealing with, how many data do you actually have, and what languages are you, are you working with. In our case, FastTech, so the library created by, by Facebook, was the best one. So it allows us to build the word embeddings and, and to classify the text. But we tried also other solutions like recurrent neural networks based on word to vec algorithm. But there are also more cases where even traditional approach based on naive bias or SVM is getting better results than, than for example, neural networks. And the next one is entity extraction. So as I said, we worked here also with name and, and location, but also more customer specific uh, order number or product. We used to that MIT information extraction library. Uh, yeah, of course, there are also many other possibilities here, but, but in our case, it was um, the best one. And we use it to build the external queries to, to the uh, system, like here, CRM. Um, a very important step in, in the whole process is actually the cooperation of, of machine learning, of the NLP, and, and the consultants um, using it. Uh, so it's allowing us to automate the re highly repetitive cases that are actually time consuming for the consultants and that, that and the time it's not needed to be spent in that, in that manner. So it's giving more time to the consultants to actually deal with the real cases that are problematic for the customers and <coughs> allow them to respond to them more quickly and also to learn on a continuous basis, allowing us to also in the future um, do it better and, and also also make the more complicated ones. Um, yeah, the challenges. Uh, so the first challenge is the language characteristics. Uh, in the first phase, we were dealing with English and with Polish. So our customers mainly um, present on the Polish market, but also has also uh, its location in other European countries. Yeah, so as you can see on the picture here, it's um, the words to play in English and in Polish and different grammatical forms of that. Uh, so it shows that actually Polish is really rich, is a language that's really rich morph when it comes to morphology. So we always have to take into account when you build some this kinds of systems that there are different characteristics that are really um, typical for some languages and for some languages not. When it comes to English, it's usually, it's usually also easier to build such these kinds of questions because you also, um, you also can use the predefined model, which is not the case in, in any other more inflected languages. Uh, secondly, it's the connection to third party systems. So in our case, it was a CRM system. So we could base it on checking the email address in a database and, and also who actually wrote the email. But when you think, for example, about some more sensitive data, like the data of the patient and so on, it's, it's getting more complicated then. And uh, lastly, follow-up questions. So we also have to think about, is it the first email that we got from this customer, or is it already an answer to some intent that was, that was previously? If it's already an answer to it, it's, does the customer still have the same problem, or is it already something different that he's just posting in, this, in the same communication channel? And Max, you can also think about it if it's already some of the messages that, that follow, maybe the customer is already getting irritated. So we can also add to that the sentiment analysis to see if, it's, if he or she is already getting irritated, so maybe it's better to directly um, 
to directly give the message to the consultant and not allow to um, and not send again the message from the mailbot to get it even to get the person even more irritated here. Um, yeah, so that's uh, some that, that of the challenges that uh, we've seen in this problem. So thank you for your attention and.